Hello, my name is Keely Booth. I'm a board certified anesthesiologist. Uh, I'm the chairman of Integris Health, uh, Integris uh, Southwest uh, Medical Center in Oklahoma City. I'm also the president and founder of the Advanced Perioperative Services, which is a, a clinical management uh, anesthesiology group, and also uh, the founder and creator of uh, Surgery Logistics, which is a solution or results oriented product uh, designed to help operating rooms uh, perform better and deliver uh, enhanced. Uh, levels of care to their patients in the most effective and cost-effective and efficient manner possible. My story begins uh, with regards to my interest in improving operations and efficiency well back into even high school and I've always had a tendency to break things down into manageable processes and uh, then as I pushed through into college um, I really uh, understood technology was beginning to revolutionize the way people access information, the way they use it in their daily work, uh, in your education. And then I got into uh, medical school and uh, it was really uh, no different. I understood that technology was revolutionizing everything around me uh, and, and through the decade of the 90s during which I attained my undergraduate degrees in biology, chemistry and then ultimately went on to medical school, uh, the internet boom uh, ensued during that period. Uh, I was basically um, interested again in how could we leverage uh, technology, computers, uh, the internet in particular to really advance uh, the knowledge base of not only the clinicians but even patients. And that's when I actually got into projects that began to uh, develop uh, software to help physicians uh, use handheld computers. And I started a company by the name of HandheldMed.com when I was a second year medical student at the University of Oklahoma College of Medicine. We ultimately went on and joined forces with uh, yet another uh, startup and uh, attained the largest medical library available for handheld computers. So as of uh, 1999, we actually had uh, over 60 different medical textbooks available that uh, clinicians, medical students, resident physicians, nurses, uh, could actually download and carry with them. And so that was very early in the game of, of mobile technology. I set up uh, one of the first uh, residency uh, portals for anesthesia, actually the first at, at the University of Oklahoma College of Medicine for anesthesiology. It acted as a resource for residents and that was what I built uh, while I was uh, a senior level resident uh, with the program. And then I moved on and, and uh, graduated from residency uh, with ideas about the inefficiencies uh, that exist within the operating room. The operating room is a very complex environment. It's an uh, environment that is plagued with uh, difficulties because it takes so many resources and processes to be lined up in such a particular order that if any one of those doesn't occur uh, at the point that it's supposed to, it throws the entire process off track. And the average hospital uh, uh, receives uh, over 60 percent of its revenues from perioperative care or surgical care related to that department. So you can understand that literally hundreds of billions of dollars in health care are at stake when you look at the surgery department. And uh, being able to make that department more effective and more efficient is absolutely a cornerstone of moving our health care system into the future. So surgery logistics really offers you as an end user uh, of the application a way to communicate in a seamless and effective uh, manner with other counterparts that are all trying to achieve the same goal which is ultimately the safe and effective uh, care, uh, surgical care of a particular patient. The way we do that we actually take data elements uh, that we've defined that uh, is critical to the process of actually getting the care and we actually collect that information and share it uh, in a seamless manner. In a matter of seconds, we can actually communicate with everyone in our care environment as well as people off-site. That's where, uh, literally from the moment the patients walk in the door, we have problems in health care. And it's what I came to refer to as the logistics of uh, the health care environment. And it's something that is largely ignored in, in the overwhelming majority of facilities in existence in our health care system today. For example, uh, often uh, you would arrive for your surgery possibly as early as 5.30 in the morning. Uh, and uh, we can actually begin to uh, communicate uh, with the anesthesiologist, with the surgeon who may not even be in the building yet, uh, but those individuals can be updated as to your status and your, uh, because uh, the patients are the most important thing and we need to know what's happening with them at all times. 
And so without ever making a phone call, without ever having to uh, receive a page or a fax, I can actually uh, essentially follow along what's happening uh, with the care uh, of our patients. And the other thing is that we find that this is critical to coordination of the care. So uh, a big part of logistics is how are we going to coordinate the staff and the resources and the materials in order to get the job done. Data can come in from many sources within the environment. It can come from a mobile phone that's carried by a nurse. It can come from a, uh, a, a wall-mounted uh, interface that allows uh, another clinician or technician to put in information, a bit of knowledge that they may have about uh, uh, the clinical care process that's ongoing. That information is then propagated uh, through the internet in a secure manner that allows it to be shared across all connected devices simultaneously. Surgery logistics is, is the same in that it can actually transmit the data in, in a, a manner in real time, in a matter of seconds, to everyone who might need to know that in a secure manner uh, and actually uh, protect that information as well as share it in, in, a, in a really seamless manner. And so we actually are, are integrated with uh, any smart mobile phone, whether you use an Android device, an iPhone, uh, whether you use uh, even a BlackBerry would be able to access our system. As we are not app-based uh, uh, only, we are able to actually uh, integrate and we, we say we're agnostic with regards to platform. Then we also do the same thing while we're in the operating room. Uh, no one has to make a phone call, no one has to get up and physically uh, uh, walk down to find out what's happening. We're able to transmit this as part of the way we take care of the patients and uh, the people that are the managers and the administrators over these departments can really understand how uh, they can uh, allocate the resources. So ultimately uh, then this carries on even into the recovery phase of care and, and when you go into the recovery room and you begin to wake up from your surgery. Uh, and even out into the transition to the ICU or the transition home. And then we actually go back in uh, using our tools and the data we've collected to analyze this uh, uh, information in a way that helps us benchmark our performance. We talk about the first morning, uh, first of the morning cases. Uh, if those aren't on time, the odds are that the rest of your day gets thrown off. And what we were, we were actually starting less than 35% of those cases on time. Uh, in 36 months, we were able to achieve an entire 12-month period uh, where we actually started over 75 percent of all of the cases on time. So we more than doubled the number of surgeries that we were able to start on time. We actually decreased the overall delay on a per-surgical basis uh, by 40 percent. Uh, we were also able to decrease what we refer to as our turnover time, so the time between surgeries was reduced by approximately 25 percent. And these are all metrics that uh, people really, uh, you can understand the impact uh, of when you're in the environment and you can feel the palpable change and uh, we've really uh, totally altered uh, the expectations of, uh, of the clinicians in the department and uh, the high level of quality of service that we're able to provide to our patients. We speak to that in terms of uh, uh, the training and it's so intuitive that uh, I often get uh, comments, uh, people say, well, that's it? And, and, and I say, yes, that, that's it. And, and I take it as a compliment when they say that because uh, they, they have no idea really of what it took to get it that simple so that it didn't interfere with their day but it actually augmented their day. And so I ask for each individual user of surgery logistics, if you can give me a few seconds, I'll give you back minutes of your day, in some cases hours. My relationship with the Business Development Center began in early uh, 2011 uh, when I became a tenant uh, at the Penn Campus uh, Business Development Center. Uh, and since that time, uh, there's been a, a lot of uh, uh, transitions and focus for me in redeveloping and redefining and raising the bar for surgery logistics and what it could actually uh, bring to the table. Um, the, uh, uh, I would say uh, having uh, essentially uh, business experts uh, literally on site on, on a day-to-day -day who can actually help uh, consult with you in anything from legal matters to uh, banking and funding matters to uh, helping with PR and marketing is, is tremendously helpful.
The BDC offers uh, its tenants a great opportunity uh, to economically pursue uh, the development of a business. There are a number of, of incentives at the state and federal levels um, uh, that they offer you. Uh, there are uh, a tremendous amount of opportunities in terms of furthering your education. Uh, if that's what you, you need in a particular area, connecting you with qualified people, help recruiting and building a team. Uh, they can help with all of those things, uh, as well as uh, an extended and wide uh, network throughout the state and even into other states of connections that they have with developing uh, a means to fund your projects, a means to uh, get in front of people who may be interested in actually seeing what you have to offer. The lab space is really about connecting with people and helping them understand the vision of surgery logistics. It's one thing to use your imagination to try to understand what it is we do and what we provide. It's another to put you in that environment uh, and really show you how things work. Uh, and this really gives you a much better sense because many of the people involved in making decisions about uh, implementation of these kinds of tools are uh, administrators or business uh, background uh, business-minded people that don't have the clinical uh, experience or, or full appreciation of how these environments are imp impacted. The other thing we're able to do is actually show uh, our, our clinician counterparts that we understand their environment uh, very well, enough uh, to be able to recreate it in full scale. Uh, and so that's, that's very helpful to us and uh, so we come in and, and this is, this is uh, an environment while to the overwhelming majority of the population is very foreign, to me, this is, this is where I live. And so we've created a, an environment for you to come into and you can actually experience uh, our solutions, our offerings, and, and our methodologies uh, in real time. And that really helps uh, bridge the knowledge gap and understand why what we're doing is so important. So within the surgical logistics uh, OR lab environment, we're able to actually uh, allow people to come in and interact and you can actually assume the role of a patient, you can assume the role of a nurse, a physician, a clinician, uh, anyone within the care environment and you can actually understand how uh, the flow of data, the communication processes and the methodologies would impact you personally from that perspective. And so it really gives people an opportunity to, to role play and understand. As a physician, I have an opportunity to really understand and observe how a nurse may be impacted, how my patients may be impacted by this. And so uh, really is a, a very flexible uh, world we've created in, in essence to, to show what is happening and give you time to, to pause, fast forward and, and rewind to uh, really look into it in great detail uh, with a realistic uh, uh, recreation of a real world uh, operating uh, room environment. Uh, the patients need this. They expect it, they want it, and if we're going to move our healthcare system into the future, we have to explore these concepts on all fronts. And uh, uh, unfortunately, medicine is traditionally relatively slow to pick up on uh, new advances. Uh, contrary to popular belief, sure we have many uh, diagnostic tools and clinical tools that are very advanced and, and among the most advanced in any industry, but it's how we deploy everyday technology to change the business and the operational management of our clinical environments that is really behind. And that's my goal is to push that forward because that's the, the common interface, uh, the friction point uh, that we have when we deal with our patients and we're trying to deliver care. I honestly believe that a facility uh, that adopts surgery logistics understands uh, the need for a focus on the patients. And that's why uh, I'm so uh, proud of surgery logistics and what we've been able to achieve and I realized uh, long ago that uh, we're able to touch many more lives although I am a physician and I work directly with patients and, and uh, I, I do uh, all of the time still provide clinical care I never want to lose that perspective as a clinician but I realized that I can touch many more lives uh, with surgery logistics people that I may have never met uh, will benefit from the work that we do here and uh, that's something to me that's very important and uh, provides an extra incentive and allows me to be far more passionate about what we're doing here at Surgery Logistics and what we're going to deliver to literally the global medical community.